Welcome to the Between Two Wheels podcast, where we talk about all things on and between two wheels. I'm your host, Johnny. I don't want to do the show notes roadblock. And y'all know my co-host, Justin. Yes, I'm still working on the chubby shuttle bird. And Uncle Quarantine Barbecue Master Ken. This episode is being brought to you by Get Lowered Cycles, where customer service actually means something. Today's episode is all about the BMW's new R18, Royal Enfield, Meteor 350 and India's Indian Challengers Recall. What's going on, guys? Words are hard. They are. Especially Can we change your nickname to Johnny. I never remember to hit the fucking record button roadblock. <laughs> I mean, it's accurate. It is fucking accurate. Supremely accurate. Yeah. So. If y'all ever show up to an episode one day and I'm just no no longer here, just know that's the reason. <laughs> I didn't Watch die the, or anything. Push the goddamn just, button. Yeah. Well, we had an amazing conversation that didn't get recorded because I'm retarded. But uh, but yeah, so how you guys been? I'm doing all right. No, we're not going through this bullshit again. I'll, I'll give you the cliff notes. Ken's life hasn't changed much. Me and you are tired of working at home because of this quarantine bullshit. Let's move on to the bikes. <laughs> there we go. Barbecue. Oh. <laughs> oh, yeah, and Ken's barbecuing a lot because he likes to smoke his meat. Yes. Just like your mom. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Get some. Okay. So now that all the pleasantries are out of the way, <laughs> the 2021 BMW R18. Now, I want to caveat this episode with Uncle Ken did all of the show notes for this. So quickly and cheaply. I, I was amazed. Now, I did add some pictures so that I have something that I can go off of when I'm doing the uh, YouTube video for this one. But, but see, that's you asked me to do notes. You yeah, didn't ask yeah. me. No, you did notes. great. You did Well, you do more short, than short and sweet. Notes. I typically do. So, but Okay, uh, I'm glad someone said it. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I was on a... Uh, live stream last night uh, with Motorcycle Mick and it came up. I was like you know, we're, we're fucking assholes to each other but we're brothers. You know, we're going to talk shit and that's just how it's going to be. And Wait, so you actually were doing a live stream last night? <laughs> yeah. Because I was doing my Patreon giveaway and someone's like, where's Roblox? I was like, I don't know, like probably trailering his bike somewhere. And someone's like, oh, he's doing a different live stream. I thought he was doing it like as a joke. Like Oh, he's doing his own live stream type of thing. <laughs> no, but after being on their live stream, I spent this morning because what I didn't record earlier is I've been getting up at 6 a.m. and I was talking about how productive it's been. I figured out a way we can use that and actually have a between two wheels live stream, which will be great for Justin because, you know, he's quarantining himself away from us. I mean, yeah, I guess we could do that. Yeah. I mean, does your your laptop has a camera on it, right? A pretty I mean, decent one? Per, I guess. I mean, each one's only a couple years old. Oh, sweet. Yeah. I mean, I've got a Lenovo that's like two years old and an Alienware that's like three or four years old. Sweet. All right. So, listeners, viewers, leave a comment down below in the YouTube video or on the Instagram post for this episode letting us know one what would be a good night to do live streams if we wanted to start doing these regularly? And two, who'd be interested in participating in that? But uh, on to the 2021 BMW R18. Well, Ken, you wrote it. I hate you it. read it. I hate it. Well, you have to read all the shit first. Just, you wrote all that. I just want to get it out there. I hate it. Okay. Do you want me to read this for you? <laughs> sure. No, fucking read it. <laughs> All right, so the first week of April, BMW announced that the R18 will be available in the 2021 model year. Now, this bike, as ugly as it is. Yeah, it's fucking ugly. All right, they're, they're trying to do like a, a throwback or something. I don't know what they're doing. That front end does remind me a lot of the Fat Boy. Like the old school 2015, 2014 it Fat Boy. does have that that wheel, yeah. Or that, just the the front end. Yeah. From yeah. a profile view, I you know anyway it's a street bob and shadow that's that's what it is look at it it's yeah. a street bob and shadow yeah yeah you know you're not wrong <laughs> so as ugly as it is and how much i don't like it a lot of people are excited about it mm -hmm. so it comes with an 1802 
cc two-cylinder boxer engine i mean that's a big engine i mean what would we say the triumph was the the triumph rocket three the 2500 cc is it yeah i mean it's, it's nowhere i mean it's not necessarily a long shot from that but it's up there it's up there with the m8s yeah i mean yeah so but this one comes stock with 116 foot pounds of torque at around 3,000 RPMs is what they say, and 91 horsepower at at a max RPM of 4,750 RPMs. So BMW says that this bike really, really sings in the 2,000 to 4,000 RPM range. Uh, completely, just well, it's a it's all torque. Mm-hmm. So, <clears throat> but anyways, there will be two models for this: the R18 base model. And the R18 first edition. Now, the R18 comes in one color, and that is Black Storm Metallic. Hmm. Just so I, I did look it up. Your and my bike, we are 100 cc's bigger than this. Really? 115 cc's bigger. Bigger? Yeah. We have a 1900 and uh, 1918 cc motorcycles i thought we were in the 15 range no or the 16 range no No, so it's or was that the 103 the 103 was in the the 15s the 107 i believe is like 1640 yeah Yeah, so the one so the calculation for anyone who wants to actually learn how to do this you take your engine's cubic inches and divide it by 61 or just type in 107 cubic inches to cc's. Yeah, like to yeah. Normal it's person. way easier. Yeah, but like 107 is 1,688 cc's. Okay. Yeah. I just thought this was just a really big engine. Maybe it was just the way... You know, you think of like a boxer engine, I always think of yep. you know, the, the Porsche and... Yeah. Well, it, it pretty much is the same engine. It's well, yeah. a horizontal firing boxer motor. Yeah, it's... And I hate it. Anyways... <laughs> <laughs> so the R18 uh, base model comes in black storm metallic with an MSRP of, of 17.5. Yeah. Now I don't know shit about how it rides. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's it's a new bike, but I just don't understand their price tag. Is it? Is, that's got to be a, just a BMW price tag. You're well, paying for no, no. BMW doesn't. Uh, okay, on their motorcycles, you get what you pay for. I mean, just 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 looking at it, it mm-hmm. looks like a basic motorcycle. It does, but it's a basic motorcycle with 116 foot pounds of torque and 91 horsepower. I mean, yeah, I just and it weighs next to nothing. I mean, it, it weighs in at 700 pounds. That's does not it? next to nothing. Does it really? Yeah, it's okay. like 716 pounds or something like that. <laughs> That's only 200 shy of our yeah. full baggers. Yeah. So that's heavier than all the soft tails. Yeah. Yeah. Most for some reason, least. I was thinking this thing was coming in somewhere in the 600. Yeah. 761 pounds. Yeah. Shit. So yeah, it's not a light bike. Th- mm. I, I do also have to, to second. It is a little overpriced. Looking at given, that. Given comparable yeah. models, it's, it's a little bit overpriced, but it's not ungodly. Yeah, I mean, I could see. Well, the price tag puts 14, it in, 15. Well, the price tag puts it into the higher end soft tails. Yeah, you know your yeah. your Fat Boy one fourteen, your um, Street Bob one fourteen is going to be not well. It'll be about the same as the base, right? About eighteen. Justin, mm. I don't think there is a Street Bob one fourteen. Is it just a one seventeen Fat Bob? Sorry. Yeah, the Fat Bob 114 is, I want to say, low 18s, high 17s. Okay, so... Well, so I guess that's not really terrible. I'm mm. just going based off of the type of motor and the type of frame that it is. It it To me, it it, it appeals more towards the, the shadow market. Yeah. Which, of course, the shadows are a whole lot cheaper. But, like you said, it does kind of have that... It definitely is a a vintage throwback. Yes, I mean that retro sure. look. No one, which is especially with that boxer motor. I mean, the motor even looks old. Oh, 100 percent. 
and it looks hard as fuck to work on. That that motor <laughs> it, though, it might be easy as hell to work on, just the way everything's oriented. I just <sighs> so I've I have worked on a four cylinder boxer motor. Out of what? Out of a WRX. Okay. And it's stupid easy. I mean, yeah. I mean, aside from being in an engine bay, if it's outside the outside the body, eh, it shouldn't be too hard to work on. But so yeah, so then you have the R18 first edition, which is when you get all your your little goodies, and that one comes in at 19870 MSRP, mm-hmm. and basically it comes in you know one color with the pinstripe. Yeah, this is the uh, the first first edition yeah. one right here and then this one's the base i actually like the base better i kind of yeah i kind of do so the r18 like we said it comes in <clears throat> at a uh, 761 pounds and it's got a four and a quarter gallon gas tank uh, it's kind of i mean i guess it's not really terribly small it's bigger than the sportster, the sportster but not by much no so, I mean, and obviously it's really not set up for touring. Of no. course, you can tour on any bike. You know, we don't need your arguments on that. Uh, the front suspension, telescopic forks, four and a, 4.7 inches of travel. It's got a one single rear central shock strut. It's got three and a half inches of travel. I mean... It's th- it's a soft tail. Yeah. It, four piston, fixed caliber brakes. Doesn't say if they're Brembo or anything like that. You know, 300 millimeter, you know, brake discs Discs. with an ABS come standard on both models. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, that's good. The first edition, though, cost you an additional $2,100. And they're saying it's going to be limited to the 2021 model year. year. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, take that as you will. Maybe it's a collector's item. You know, for some people it will be, you know, but at that price, I really don't see it. Nah. Uh, so then you can add the premium package on top of all that. And that gets you your hill start. So if you're on a hill, you know, you hold the brake, won't let you roll backward. Uh, it's got a reverse assist. I didn't really think it was that big of a bike to need a reverse assist. 760 pounds. I mean. I wouldn't mind having a reverse assist on my bike. Well, on, on our bikes, you know. I mean. I just I don't see a bike that size with its stance mm-hmm. really needing it. I mean, sure if you know and if you're you also shorter, have to remember you're six four. That's what I was gonna dude. say. You know, if you're shorter, <laughs> it, it might help. But think eh. of Brad backing up his sportster. A uh, Hasso. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> or Hasso backing up any bike. Yeah, any bike. <laughs> uh, so the premium package, you know, you know, he'll start, uh, reverse assist, uh, and it does have an adaptive headlight, which you know is becoming a real real popular item on all vehicles Mm -hmm. uh you know when you turn into the corners it brightens up into your turn we can't say all vehicles because the significantly technologically advanced harley davidson does not have it on theirs correct (laughs) but it's becoming more and more popular yeah yeah so Uh, in about five years harley davidson will come out with it and they'll think it's the most amazing thing and they'll market it that way oh yeah and it'll be like nine hundred dollars oh yeah and it'll have a stupid fucking name with like a exclamation point or an ampersand or something (laughs) yeah and totally (laughs) trademarked yeah and then finally uh you can add on the select package which is like 225 bucks it adds the anti-theft uh lockable fuel cap and heated grips and i'm pretty sure you can add that onto either model Mm. Uh, how much is the premium package it didn't say (laughs) but i mean it's premium yeah (laughs) Uh, no coupons yeah accepted there but i mean you know what the premium like package that's where bmw really gets their their price point up is because like i remember i was pricing out one of the gs models and god by the time you actually put shit on the bike you're another three or four grand in the hole yeah so here's 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 a thing and like a k1600 bagger you know from bmw everyone touts oh it's only twenty one thousand dollars except there's no there's no dealership that carries that they're all ordering it with the premium package and all this other stuff well yeah so you it's hard to find one at that price yeah i mean you would have to order it specifically and say i want exactly this a couple years ago 
when I was on my way to trade in my Road King, I found one in the Southwest. That was the closest one. It happened to be in Austin, but that was the only one. And the guy even did an inventory check and he's like, no, nah, there's, <laughs> you're not going to find one, another one until you go to like New York. Wow. I'm like, shit. He's like, just dealers don't order them. We got this one on a dealer trade. I was like, oh, fair enough. But yeah, to, to Justin's point, you'll probably never find this bike for the 19 or the 17,500 price no. tag. No, not at all. And, and it's ugly. I hate the exhaust. I hate the way it looks from the front with the freaking motors sticking out the sides. I mean, all I can think is, granted, you know, if you wreck, you've got other issues, but that's your, there's no way to put an engine guard yeah. on that. No. You're replacing everything. Yeah, it's going to rip your entire freaking cylinder head off. Well, but they, they do make strong motors. Oh, well, you know, strong only works so well. Yeah, at but 70, at 70 miles, miles an hour, hour doesn't mean <laughs> shit. The, the whole thing, it just... It doesn't look pleasing. And what, and did you did you happen to watch any of the videos Shit. of people riding it? No. Your I mean your toes are jammed up against those freaking cylinder heads. So yeah. it has yeah the foot controls warmers. are right underneath it. Yes, you, you definitely your toes will definitely stay warm. It comes with foot warmers. Yeah, That's I, awesome. I foresee a lot of like melted shoes. That's, those on those are, fins. It'll be a lot of melted wingtips <laughs> from the uh, the old or the yuppies who buy this. Oh yeah, because that that those look like them. almost like rear sets. Like the controls are so far back. Yeah, almost. Like they're only like three inches ahead of the top of the seat. Yeah, they're. I would that like is ridiculous. I would like to see what, for at least for the three of us, what our triangle looks like on this. I would hate it. I can tell you Probably right now. Probably stupid. It. I mean, I don't even think you'd actually get a triangle. No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Get a parallelogram or something. <laughs> yeah. So, okay, Justin, what are, what are your thoughts about this bike? I think it's boring and lackluster. Th yes. That good, that's, huh? That's pretty much all I got for it. It does not jiggle my giblets whatsoever. I want to ride it. I want to see. I mean, sure, I'll ride it. What are they doing that gives it that price tag? It I, looks so boring that the disc brakes look out of place. Like, I feel like it's so boring it needs drum brakes. <laughs> yeah. I mean, they should have gone full full vintage and done that. I did, the fucking exhaust just kills me. It's so bad. <laughs> You know, if they'd have put a different exhaust on that, it might look okay. I could probably, you know, give it something for that. But then when it comes to two colors, I mean, you, you got the, the black with pinstripe for, for <laughs> or, the fancy edition. and Or just black. Or just black. Well, so they took the Henry Ford method. I'm okay with that. But the engine design itself, you're going to have these two nubs coming out of the front of your bike, no matter what exhaust you put on there. Yeah, it looks like two water jugs. Yeah, it it's yeah, but I still want to ride it. So the first motorcycle that I rode was like an actual motorcycle was actually a vintage BMW. When I was working at one of the car dealerships, the owner had one, and it looked well like that. I mean, the boxer engines are supposed to be great engines. I mean, and multi they are multiple car companies use them, so. I mean, it's a, I think it's a Porsche designed motor. I think that's who originally designed it. I don't recall. So don't quote me on that. I mean, that's who you always hear. The, the, the boxer engine comes in, you know, the Porsche that's yeah. The Porsche Boxster. Yeah. <laughs> so, but look, these things will run forever. So actually it was uh Carl Benz. Oh, oh so Vins Benz Benz. So Benz. it's a Mercedes design. All right. I believe so. It might just be a coincidence. Oh, okay. Well, and I think that you know they they threw that motor in there and with that vintage look to you know go back to their the BMW heritage yeah. of aircraft motor. <laughs> <laughs> but it's terrible. <laughs> I just maybe if they flip the heads to where the exhaust is just firing out the back, that might change. And then at least you could put a better exhaust system. You know, better and, looking and, exhaust and system. they might have done that. But depending on how much back pressure they need. Yeah. 
the exhaust might have just been too short for it. Yeah. I wonder I where the intake is on this damn thing. You know? Oh, you're right. <laughs> <laughs> Did you not notice that? No. It's probably under the seat. Uh, yeah. Yeah, there's, I think, I don't know. Anyways, I'm going to ride it, but this is one I would never buy. No, no it's an ugly bike. Unless it's, it's so plain. Unless there's something that just scares the ever living dog shit out of me, and I have to continue riding it to tame the beast. And I mean, and you know, in 100, 116 foot pounds of torque, it's not a, a great number. 91 horsepower, not a really great number. Yeah. I mean, I, I'm I'm gonna go out on a limb here and say I think BMW dropped the ball on this one. Yeah. But I'm also gonna go back and say. They're probably building this for a niche market that they already know that they're going to sell every one of these things. You know, and and they've got the, and I think I read somewhere that they've already got, you know, a full accessory line for them. So you'll be able to kit it out however you want, mm -hmm. you know. But, you know, you got to remember you get that standard package for 225 bucks so you can get your anti-theft unlocking gas cap. It's important. It is. Well, it's an anti-theft system. So they actually have an alarm system. That's what that is. Yeah, keyless, you know, okay. <laughs> oh, oh! Speaking of uh, bolt-on accessories, have you guys seen the stuff that Elon Musk is putting out for the Cybertruck? Is it better windows? It's like a camper. It's no, like I a haven't. legit camper for it now. I have not. And they have a tent system, and then they have like a big toy hauler so to go with it. Does the tent <laughs> just connect to the truck? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's been done before. That's. Nothing spectacular. Okay, the camper looks pretty dope. It, it does, right? I really like that. I mean, <laughs> I like the Cybertruck anyways. I'm, I'm on the unpopular opinion there, but no, the toy hauler looks cool. The camper looks cool. I, I like look it. it up now. <laughs> All right. So let's, uh, while you look that up. Um, oh, I fucking hate it. <laughs> <laughs> you, you're just jealous because it's going to have so much more torque than your Cummins diesel. <sighs> I fucking hate it so much. <laughs> Tone capacity? Yes. <laughs> um, <laughs> but for that 225, you also get heated grips. Oh, okay, the heated grips, I mean, if they're as good as what we got, <laughs> those look, fuckers will set you on fire. Look, I cannot go above three no. on my grips. No. <laughs> okay, let's talk about... Um, Royal Yuppie Bike Builders Enfield. I mean, Royal Enfield. Okay, so I'm... I don't want to say I'm excited. Okay. I am glad that Royal Enfield is still doing their thing. All right, they're an old company. Mm -hmm. And they make... Not necessarily a cheap bike. It's an affordable bike. And they, they have... They're known for their traditional classic look and line. Which I can appreciate. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> so, so they're coming out with the uh, the Royal Enfield Meteor three hundred and fifty mm -hmm. for twenty twenty one. All right, and you called it the Yuppie, the Yuppie Bike Builders Enfield. Yeah. All right. So I looked this up. They just announced this at the beginning of April that they're coming out with the Meteor three hundred and fifty. So apparently, the Meteor three hundred and fifty is replacing the Thunderbird series. Mm -hmm. I guess the Thunderbird's been around a while. It's a, it's a real popular one. Royal Enfields are really popular in India, well, where they're made. And and where the company's based out of. Yeah. And and Asia. Yeah. So the, the Thunderbird was really popular. But last year, they trademarked Meteor. Mm -hmm. And then they were trying, of course, they trademarked that in multiple countries. I don't understand trademarks as far as... You know, how many places you have to do it. I you know each country does their own thing. But, so, they got the Meteor 350 coming out. And to be honest, it looks like another... Thunderbird. Another Royal Enfield, another Thunderbird. Rebranding it. Uh, and, of course, you know, with, with it being a new motor and whatnot, you know, you get, you know, more durability, usually. You know, that's the hopes and plans. Uh, but come to find out that... They only sold the Thunderbird in India and in Asia mm -hmm. because of the trademark. Because in America, Thunderbird is still owned by Ford. 
And in Europe, Thunderbird is owned by Triumph. Hmm. So by naming it the Meteor, they essentially get to keep their Thunderbird under a new name. <clears throat> and really, it's it's just, a, you know, for, for some people, they love them. You know, I mean, they they do look just... They do the classic, the modern classic, mm-hmm. modern vintage really well, in my opinion. Yeah, I mean, look, they're just as stubborn as Harley Davidson when it comes to all this shit. <laughs> they don't want to change. Yeah, they, they don't. I mean... I don't think they can afford to change. No, well, I mean, you look I at the... I think that's pri- their problem. Well, you look at the prices of them. I mean... Um, a new Royal Enfield. When we had the Royal Enfield dealer here in town, you could go get a brand new Royal Enfield for like five thousand dollars. Oh, cheaper than that. I mean, that was like the top model. Like, yeah, that was like put all your money into it. Give me the best you got, and it was like five thousand dollars. And they're not yeah. bad little bikes to ride. They're definitely you know commuter bikes, around town bikes. Uh, but I think you know they do the 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 modern vintage look the throwback look you know really well they've added you know modern aspects with the you know the the forks and you know the frame and stuff like that but it's still they keep their classic color schemes and everything like that and to be honest i've always kind of wanted one you would look like a fucking ape humping a football but they're fun to ride (laughs) i mean i've actually ridden them but is that did you is that where you, they had those at the uh school? Yeah, the motorcycle school. Okay. Yeah. yeah. That's what I, that's the first and really the only time I've been in a Royal Enfield dealership and I almost I was very heavily considering getting one cuz the they had a 250 that was like the the army green, like yeah. the flat olive green and mm-hmm. had all like the spray painted graphics and everything like that. And it was only like 3000 bucks. It was a, just a little 250. And, and I they actually it was super cool. They actually make accessories to where you can use the 50 caliber ammo cans mm-hmm. or 20 millimeter <laughs> ammo cans yeah. as your saddlebags. They make the accessories to attach those to the bike. I mean, because it was used in the war a lot. I mean... Yeah. I, I haven't ridden a Royal Enfield ever. Um, I know Donnie always bragged about them. So that kind of put me off. I mean, I wouldn't, anyways, I wouldn't but, brag about them, but they're fun little bikes and they're inexpensive. Well, look, you know, I had a preconceived notion around those fucking electric scooters and I was completely wrong because those are a blast. Oh, yeah. So I'm, I'm not going to say Royal Enfield sucks. I have never had a desire to ever buy one. I mean, yeah. but I mean, I can understand that. But I'm willing to go ride it. Oh, sure. And they're they're fun little rides. Yeah. I mean, I mean, as long as you go into it knowing what you're getting. Oh yeah, you're getting a very. You're not getting a road warrior. No, you're getting a very basic motorcycle, yeah. speedometer, and gas tank. <laughs> you know what I mean? You know, I found out this week that a bike in Texas does not legally have to have a speedometer. Correct. It doesn't legally have to have turn signals either. Well, I knew that, but a speedometer, that just, that blew my mind. Well, I had I mean, some guy on, on one of my comments, he's like, I don't understand why people would, would buy a bike that doesn't have a, an RPM. I'm just like, well, why, what? I don't need like, the RPMs. I don't need that. I can hear the engine know when I need to shift. And, and that's what I, I asked him. I was like, well, why do you, why, why do you need that? And he goes, well, why do you need a speedometer? Why do you need a scale? And then he, of course, you know, typical oh, so YouTube comment. One of those guys. Okay. Okay. Yeah. yeah, Keyboard yeah. And I was like, well, I'm not going to get a ticket for over RPMing, you know, like. <laughs> yeah. Maybe a sound order. But then I, and I looked it up. I was like, oh, shit. A speedometer is not a required thing. But no, I, I mean, if you think about it, it's not a safety. It's not safety equipment. I mean, if you're going with the flow of traffic, you're, chances are you're not speeding. Yeah. As long as you're not passing people left and right, then you're probably <laughs> not, not in speeding. Houston. <laughs> Right. Well, accurate. But see, or or Dallas. But see, then you're still going with the Fuck flow Dallas. of traffic. So m- most police officers aren't going to pull you over if you're going with the flow of traffic, even if traffic is going faster than the speed limit. If you're going slower than the flow of traffic and you're impeding other drivers, they'll stop you. Or if you're really going 
fast and just passing people. Yeah. Then they'll stop you. Look, after my mom died, I was going back and forth to Dallas every fucking week. And I was keeping it when the cruise control would actually engage. I I had it at 90 pretty much the entire fucking time. And I was blowing by cops or I was blowing by troopers and nothing. So, because I mean, there's probably five or six other cars that were going that speed. Yeah. As long as you're not making a scene. (laughs) Yeah. And you're not being reckless. Yeah. But is what is the market share in, in, I know we don't have the numbers in front of us, but how big of a market does Royal Enfield have in the United States? Not very big. I, I wouldn't think so. Now I know the dealership here. I was, uh, I was good acquaintances with, uh, the owner, Kathy. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I mean, they had people in there, you know, every time that I was in there, there's always someone in her shop, almost always, whether they were buying, you know, merchandise or buying motorcycles or having, you know, their, their bikes worked on. But I mean, I was there several times and, you know, people would roll in and buy one or two bikes and leave. Well, so, I mean, they, they did, from what I understand, you know, I don't, I didn't know their numbers, of course, mm-hmm. but from what I could tell, they were doing all right. I mean, as far as selling both new and used infields. Hmm. I'm trying to find an answer. I can't get a clear one. Yeah. I, look, I probably have passed Roy infields and had no clue that they were Roy infields. It's very possible. I mean, because I don't, I don't recall ever actually noticing one in the wild. I mean, I've, I see them here and there. Mm-hmm. Uh, I saw them more when the dealership was open. Sure. Uh, and that might have just been because I went. Yeah, there. you were in the proximity <clears throat> of know, their mecca. So, so I mean, I saw them more maybe because you know, it's like when you buy a new car, you see everyone driving the same car as you. So maybe that was it, but. I mean, yeah, I mean, they're a good little company and, you know, it's, it's a really basic motorcycle. And for, for some people, that's great. You know, and when you can get a brand new one with a factory warranty for $5,000, mm-hmm. you can't really argue with that. Well, so in your opinion, would you suggest the infield as a starter bike? Oh, sure. I think their biggest engine is like 500 cc's or something like that. I'm, don't quote me they on that. 650. 650. So, I mean... Yeah. And they're not wound up like a sport bike, so yeah, because they're they're true blue cruisers. Yeah, uh, there's actual a standard. I think is what the official name or whatever class of motorcycle it is. I think it's called a standard. Okay, I see what you're saying. Yeah, no, they're the, I, yeah, absolutely. I mean, they get the job done. They're they're not overpowered. I mean, of course, you can kill yourself on any motorcycle. Yep, but. You know, if you yeah. want if you want to get into, you know, the standard cruiser style kind of motorcycle to where you can add some accessories and it's real simple and stripped down, then so, sure. So here's what's sad. I would get the Royal Enfield Meteor three fifty before I'd get that fucking R eighteen. The R eighteen? Yeah. Oh, I would too. Because honestly, the ones I have looked at and the pictures of them, they actually look nice. They're not ugly bikes. No. They are simple. They're, but, they're simple. Yeah. I like the I like the colors that they use. I mean, yeah, they've got black and white. They got, I mean, black, white, yellow. They have a gloss green. They have their, you know, their, their flat OD green. Mm-hmm. And I think they have a red. That's it. I mean, it, I mean, it's almost like a good chopper platform. Oh, a lot of people turn them into... Uh, Cafe cafes and bobbers. and bobbers and things like that because they're so simple to work on. So speaking of bobbers, I sent uh, Roblox a link on Facebook. Um, they actually put out one. a bobber concept. Uh, they haven't approved it yet. It looks it looks good. It looks amazing. <laughs> yeah, it's right there. Way better than, than oh, yeah, Triumphs. Yeah. But Way this thing's Triumphs got bobber. 1140cc V-twin in it. Yeah. I mean, that'd be impressive to see. That's a good-looking bike, though. Yeah, and then right below that, there's the Royal Enfield Himalayan 650 Dual Sport, which actually doesn't look half bad either. Oh, that's a Royal? Dang. 
See, that could be fun. Yeah. And look, I mean, that that looks fine. It doesn't look like a like they tried too hard to make it look like something it wasn't supposed to be, you know, like yeah. the Pan America. I'm just saying, you know, it <laughs> it looks like a it looks like an ADV bike. Yeah. Or the, it looks like a dual sport. The dual, dual, dual fenders there in the front. Yeah. I can appreciate that. Everything's tucked in nicely. It, it's simple. I mean, it fits their their brand. Yeah. Yeah. They, they don't stray from... They know what they're good at. That's a really yeah. good looking bike. I really like that. But I wonder if this is a U.S. market bike. Which one, the Himalayan? Yeah, because I, you know, the all these are coming out of India, right? All yeah. the the blog here that we're looking at, and I'm I'll drop the link to what we're looking at so y'all can take a look at it uh, in the show notes for this. Uh, go to between two wheels dot com. The two is spelled T W O, and click on the show notes link. Yeah, I really like that. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, IndianAutosBlog.com is what we're looking at. Um, speaking of Indian, let's, uh, let's talk about the, the Indian Challenger recall. So, so this is kind of a weird recall. It's such a weird fucking recall. Right? <laughs> like, I actually, I read it, and then I actually read it again to make sure I was reading it correctly. I did the exact same thing. I was like, did he, what? <laughs> so, so earlier this year, Indian issued a recall on a number of the new Challenger baggers. Okay. Due to a possible engine out, output shaft issue. All right. What that issue is, is they're saying that they may not have been properly lubricated on the assembly line. Okay. So that sounds terrible, right? Possibly grenade your engine, whatever course i don't see how they couldn't lubricate them on the line when you usually lube everything when you assemble it in a motor that's just from my experience of working on a motor okay but so according to the national highway transportation safety administration it says that around one percent of these 616 units of the new 2020 indian challengers could be affected by the problem all right six bikes one percent of six hundred and sixteen. Yeah, six six total. All right, massive six point one six bikes. If you got a point one six bike, you know you're definitely affected by this recall. There's <laughs> yeah, a mass right. joke for you guys. So, so but according I'm... to the defect notice, Indian mentions that on some Challengers, apparently one percent of six hundred and sixteen, the engine output shaft bearing might not have been lubricated during assembly. This could potentially lead to the bearing malfunctioning and to a sudden deceleration which in extreme cases could cause a crash so according to indian uh obviously if you have any problems with it you need to contact your indian dealer here's what they recommend to owners if you have fewer than 50 miles on the odometer do not ride your motorcycle contact them (laughs) Make arrangements. And sell it. For, yeah. <laughs> make arrangements for it to get towed to the shop so that it can be fixed. All right. If it has more than 50 miles on it, you're probably fine. There's an online <laughs> form that you can fill out, submit to Indian, and they'll decide what they're going to do. If you made it past 50 miles, they, they figure you're, you're probably okay. But that's the recall. So if you have less than 50 miles on there, don't ride it. Your shit's going to break. That's <laughs> who has a bike with less than 50 miles on it. Roadblock even has more than that. <laughs> I mean, like when I got my bike, I think it had, when I test rode my bike, I put 30 miles on it and it had 38 miles when I parked it at the dealership. So, I mean, that that's really the only way that I see that. Can we just take a second to think how upset you would be if you bought a brand new Challenger and before you even hit 50 miles, the motor freaking grenades itself. Oh, I'd be so freaking hot, dude. <laughs> like, <laughs> can you imagine? Could you, could you imagine me on the side of the road because my fucking engine just grenaded? <laughs> oh, yeah. 
and then this fucking I recall wouldn't comes out. I want to be the out. guy that answered that call. Oh my god, the the Indian dealership would they probably hang up on me. I've seen how mad you get when you don't get your McDonald's. Right. I can only imagine on a twenty thousand dollar bike. That was polite, angry too. <laughs> <laughs> Over twenty dollars worth of food. But yeah, it's, that's it's, a you problem. <laughs> it's, it's a fucking yeah. you problem. But yeah, that's the weirdest fucking recall. <laughs> but didn't so didn't strange. Indian have a recall not too long ago about their brake light being too bright? Did they something like that? Yeah, I, I think it was on. It the was on the Indian. scouts. Oh, was it the scouts? I, I could have sworn it was on sure it was the, the bigger, scouts. the the bigger bikes. I must the, have missed that. Their touring or Continental or whatever the fuck they call it. Their touring bikes. I that for some reason I thought it was on there. It might be. I I do remember us talking about that though I, I thought it was on the smaller bikes that had the the single tail light ah but yeah it's a weird ass recall so if you've got an indian challenger 2020 indian challenger with less than 50 miles on it contact your dealership and if you got more than 50 miles on it's probably okay i okay. mean we say this every time a recall comes out though this is a law that they have to issue a recall if it meets certain standards and it's a cover your ass yes because I mean, like i said one percent of 616 motorcycles. Yeah. Six now, six bikes. I yeah. mean, out of 600, 1%, I'm okay with that. That's that's an insane... More than 1% of humans have something wrong with them. Let's face it. <laughs> I mean... More than 1% of humans should be recalled. You've got a better chance of dying of coronavirus than so I'm having just, this yeah. mic problem. Actually, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. That's, that's not wrong. <laughs> um, so is that saying that they are only producing 616 units of I the guess, challenger i think that was how many had been produced by the time they they caught it yeah oh okay okay yeah so they yeah they made 616 before they realized oh shit someone left their lube can at home i don't think that's how that works but okay <laughs> close enough i mean might as well someone forgot to spit on it <laughs> yeah that's that's hilarious look Recalls. Anytime you have a mass-produced product, shit's gonna happen. Oh, it's gonna yeah. happen, dude. I mean, it doesn't mean that Indians a bad company or that they produce shit. It's just shit happens shit during happen. manufacturing. And and like I said, you know, not being lubricated during assembly, whether that's a person mm-hmm. who, or a robot or a robot who is doing that. I mean, shit honestly, happens. Honestly, though, it's never the robot's fault. Robots only doing what you tell it to do. I mean, yeah. Maybe there's a clogged oil yeah. line, and that's why they weren't getting lubricated. Maybe. So then that comes back to the person not doing their their checks on their equipment to yeah, make they're, sure that they're it's not working doing their properly. preventative maintenance. Exactly. Yeah. So yeah. <sighs> okay. So if any of our listeners out there own one of these 616 Indian Challengers, does it? Doesn't Rosie? Didn't she buy a new Challenger? No, she went with the uh, the Batwing knockoff. <laughs> Did she? Yeah, I think she went with a Springfield. No. It's not a Springfield. No. Well, Rosie, we, I'm just too lazy to fucking look it up. Rosie, if you have one of these Challengers, take it, <laughs> get it checked out. Well, we don't want anything to happen to you. She's definitely got... Oh, she's blown 50... She She probably put 50 miles on it on her test ride. Yeah, she's she's got way more. I, I would be shocked if she didn't have five thousand plus on that bike already. I forget what her Instagram is. Yeah, I don't it care. It needs to be changed just to Rosie so we can find it. Yeah, yeah. just Rosie. And Roblox, I need you to change yours just to Roblox because the way you spell Johnny's fucking stupid. <laughs> How? <laughs> you spell it like it's a street name. J O N N Y? No. Yeah, that's fucking stupid. J N T H. Oh, no. No, my my Facebook profile name is like that because I don't want people finding No, I'm me. talking about your your actual name. Yeah, I'm yeah. talking about your Facebook name. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But your Facebook name is also fucking retarded. Oh. <laughs> no HR department's ever going to find me on it. It's true. It's true. <laughs> Um, okay, so if anyone has any questions or concerns, owners of the model affected are invited. They're invited to contact Indian Motorcycle Customer Service at one 204 3697 to have their VIN verified. 
Um, the National Highway fuckers, they also have a safety hotline that you can call. It's it's in the show notes. Okay, she did get a chieftain. Chieftain, there you go. Like a I dark said horse? Chieftain. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you were right, Justin. Yeah. Thank you. I knew Thank it was you. not Struck a challenger. That ego. Yeah, she got the, the blacked out chieftain dark horse. Yeah. And that, she looks good on that bike. It fits her. It fits her. Extremely well. She doesn't look tiny on it. You know, like, yeah. that looks weird sometimes when you see a chick, a really tiny chick on a, a massive bike. Yeah. And vice versa. You see a giant dude on a... Sportster. Yeah. Yeah. It can be done, though. Yeah, yeah. We saw Justin do it. I mean, I did it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, actually, seeing Ken on the dyno was even funnier. <laughs> <laughs> Accurate. <laughs> you know, I, I love your closing argument because I think this is going to hit home for a lot of folks. So go ahead, my friend. All right. I think it's going to be a divided opinion, too. Yeah. Oh, I'm for, for sure. So, closing argument. Do recalls, not necessarily just in motorcycles, but do recalls influence your purchases? Who's first? How about you, Roblox? All right. No. Well... It won't influence the actual purchase, but I do check for recalls before I purchase something. And it's, this is only on like used vehicles or used, well, used bikes. Um, I just want to know. Bike. Shut the hell up. I know, but I help people <laughs> find used bikes. It's, it's one of those things. I just want to know if I'm going to have to deal with it. That's my only concern about the recall. Again, in manufacturing, shit happens. And with a recall, you're getting it fixed. Yeah. So. I mean, I had a recall on my Kia. Yeah. The the LED lights were crapping out or something like that. My truck had a recall. You know, my last three Harleys had a recall. Yeah. I mean, they were all the same year and same type. But at the end of the day, they all still had to get that stupid brake booster thing fixed or whatever it was. Yeah. Tracy's bike's still not fixed. Well, you can get it fixed whenever you want. Well, yeah. It's a recall, so they have to fix it. So. Yeah. Well, she's she hasn't had any time to ride. Yeah. Something like that. So to, to answer the question, the only part that influences me is if I'm going to have to, is just to check to see if there are any, so I can ask to see if, if I'm going to have to deal with it. That's all. I don't look at it as a, oh, man, this thing's a piece of shit. No, there's so many other things that make something a piece of shit that a recall is not going to affect my decision making one way or the other. Yeah, yeah, that's fair. What about you, Justin? Um, I would I would say it doesn't influence, but it does have some sort of an effect. I realize those are the same things, but let me explain. Um, it kind of piggybacking off a of roadblock. I do look at seeing like, okay, how much of a pain in the ass is this going to be thankfully knock on wood i've never had a recall on any of my vehicles um everything that i've bought has been old enough to where everything's already pretty much been done on it um but i do, i do look at numbers because you know like for example because you're the, a data analyst i'm a data analyst so i have to look at like <laughs> what's the likelihood of a previous recall like for example like the like the airbags like that wasn't on any of the auto manufacturers that was from the supplier but all these auto manufacturers had to pretty much foot the bill which i'm sure there was legal proceedings on that and everything like that but how how do they handle it and how big of a safety risk is it okay like for example like um right when computers started making a, a like a big footprint into the auto industry, there was a thing called the vanishing digit that basically a solar flare from the sun could affect one number to go from a zero to a one within the programming. And basically cars would just like drive off on their own. It would, you know, override the, the cruise control or something like that, or just completely shut down everything lock the brakes you name it make the car turn just do all kinds of crazy stuff like that I, if they have a constant history of something like that of you know people dying that might sway me away from it but at the end of the day i'm not going to be like oh i'm not going to like for example you see it you know in the news all the time you know 50,000 ford vehicles or 50,000 chevy vehicles like when i see those articles like it it doesn't 
affect me. Those numbers are a drop like, in the bucket, though. It's a yeah. drop in the bucket, and they're usually over something stupid that happened to one person. So now they have to go and check fifty thousand vehicles to make sure it doesn't happen again. Well, yeah, I mean, it was, it was like my Kia. You know, it was two thousand fifteen through two thousand eighteen model year Kia Optima Optimas that you know are this model up that have LED tail lights are all being recalled to check and check and replace a little LED control module. Yeah. Well, it, you know, one of the big ones was Ford with the Explorer. Oh, the the, the, the way, wilderness tires. Yeah, the oh, way my the, mom actually had an Explorer during that time. Yeah. Yeah, so did my mom. So that was a legitimate safety issue. Oh, absolutely. And you know, they say, "Oh, we had bad tires." No, you had a poor, a shitty fucking design. It's not even a poor design; it's a shitty fucking design by putting your goddamn exhaust muffler or the exhaust pipe right in front of your rear tire. Yeah. Why in the fuck would you do that? Especially on any of those vehicles that's driving in the south. Oh yeah, you yeah. compound that heat. Yeah. And just destroys them. Yeah. So. That was just a stupid design, so, but it was a legitimate safety issue. So oh, something yeah. like that, Justin, is that what you're talking about? Something along those yeah. lines would sway you, mm, maybe I shouldn't get this. Or like the Ford Pinto, like you get rear-ended and your car explodes. Or like the Fiero, you get rear-ended and your car explodes. Those <laughs> are Maybe features. steer away from the particular yeah. model. <laughs> you pay extra for that. <laughs> That's a feature. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Instant but car th- total. Things of that. Yeah, that's how you that get your nature. full insurance. <laughs> uh, you know, for me, uh, the same. I mean, unless it's something that is inherently dangerous. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, I mean, like the, the those tires, you know, specifically the Explorers. So, so wait, wait, wait. We talk about, or you said it, but you said inherently dangerous, like riding a motorcycle. I mean, it's not necessarily inherently dangerous. No, it's I inherently mean, dangerous. Residually speaking, li- it's living not. in your house is is dangerous. You're more likely to get hurt in your bathroom or kitchen than anywhere else. So living is inherently dangerous. So my point being <laughs> is that unless there's a good chance I'm going to die from it, even if it has been fixed, because that's always a concern. Like, did this actually fix the issue? Mm-hmm. It really, I guess we could sum them up with like inpatient versus outpatient procedures. Right? Yeah. 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 Are they going to have to tear <laughs> my fucking motor down? And well, it's like with the I'm Milwaukee. Be without a car. It's like with the Milwaukee eights and the sumping issue. Mm-hmm. Like I wanted to get a Milwaukee eight, but then they started having these sumping issues, and they're like, "Oh, well, we're going to have to bring your bike in, tear it apart, you know, put in this vent tube or whatever they had to do for it," and that's supposedly going to fix it. Hmm. And then it kind of still happened, so I waited until it'd been a couple of years to buy mine with the Milwaukee eight in the hopes yeah, that that issue won't happen. I mean, I, and I'm no man catch hell for this, but I haven't owned a Milwaukee eight motor long enough to actually notice if it's having, you know, if I'm having any something issues or if they're, if it's actually an effect. Yeah. I mean, so I think the like road said, glide and the happens. street glide both only had 5,000, you know, maybe 5,500 miles on them. Well, you know. The Road King only had like 3,000 miles on it. So, I don't, I don't know. I mean, I, I've, be, you know, with that information, I have not had any issues with the Milwaukee 8. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, it, is it going to be something that is could potentially kill me? Or is it going to be something where my bike's going to be down for a while? Yeah. Or my car or whatever. You know, for the longest time, I didn't buy any Taurus revolvers mm-hmm. because... Taurus for years had issues with their firing pin and their firing pin system Mm. to where you'd go to shoot, uh, you know, go to shoot and it would just go click. (laughs) And, you know, that was a problem for people who, you know, obviously for law enforcement and people who carry them for self-defense. Right. Yeah. You expect it to work, you know, and that was, and that was a stigma that lasted with me. And that was like 30 years ago that that was all really happening. 20, 30 years ago, that was all really happening. Hmm. So that stuck around. It, and it's kind of like the Harley thing. Harley's leak. Yeah. Well, that was 40 years ago, mm-hmm. but it stuck around. Yeah. No, I, I hear you. I mean, 
look, it's going to put a sour taste in people's mouths. But I, you know, with this whole thing with the Challenger, it's a brand new model with a brand new motor. Yep. All these new things, you have to expect some hiccups. It's going to happen. And look, with this fucking output shaft issue, whatever. They caught it. They, they're they owning it. They're fixing it. It's fine. And I'm, I'm going to tell you right now, the actuary tables on that, 1% of 661 motorcycles, that's they could risk that oh. and all 600 motorcycles oh. blow up and they still would have made profit. Oh yeah. Then having to do a recall. So they're, they're paying a pretty hefty price on this and you know, it sucks because that, that adds to why motorcycles and vehicles cost so much money, but Hey, they're taking care of it. And and I don't know if they ever would have had to own up to this. I don't know how many accidents there were or if this was 100% preemptive. Yeah, we just noticed it. Oh, shit, this this oiling line for this robot or, you know, Mike was pissed off, you know, disgruntled worker. And just or he I'm, used the lube for something else. Yeah, who knows? You know? So, yeah. A lot of dark, no. dark corners in a, uh, in a manufacturing plant. Yeah, big picture. You know, recalls really don't influence my my purchases. Cool. Well, let's. I wonder what our listeners and viewers think. Leave a comment. Let us know. Tell us your thoughts. Does a recall actually matter to you when you're going to make a purchase? All right, and then comment in in the video section as well. What's your favorite barbecue recipe? Nice. I need to know. Yeah, yeah. Thank you for tuning in to Between Two Wheels Podcast. To see the show notes for this and all of our episodes, to find links to our social media and Patreon page where we are raising money for Project Clean Slate, head over to our website at www.betweentwowheels.com. The two is spelled out T-W-O. On behalf of Justin, Uncle Ken, I am Johnny Roblox saying, be yourself unless you're a jerk. Then be someone better. Peace. Uh, uh, uh,